my friends welcome to my channel focusing free cat today i want to show you how i build this manual press in free cat and currently i am using free cat rc2 of version 1 so this is the release candidate 2 which was released about a month ago and actually they have released another um, candidate release candidate 4 which two days ago and here i have that release candidate 4 if i wanted to open this file up somehow this file is not performing well this assembly workbench is not performing well in release candidate 4 somehow it's it's breaking up but it is is the same file i worked like a week ago and the same file is working fine in release candidate 2 so between release candidate 2 and 4 something must have gone wrong i'm sure they will figure it out uh, with that so i would recommend you if you are trying to follow this model um, use release candidate 2 before they release um, the Freecat 1 version. I know that this is the last release candidate before they actually go with Freecat 1 version. All right, the original idea of this model came from this website, 507movements.com. This is the mechanical movement number 133. It shows how this um, original drawing works. And then it also shows the animation i followed their lead on this and build this model so i will take a minute to explain what i built how i build it and then finally demonstrate how i put this thing together so this is a video for intermediate level users in freecad and focusing mainly on assembly workbench so what I want to do, I want to save this as a different file. So the original file does not get corrupted because I know that that file is working, right? Don't want to mess it up. So save it as. I'm going to say demo. And then I want to go ahead and delete everything from this assembly. Now what I have are all of these different materials and i want to go with one by one first of all i want to talk about this frame so that's the frame let's keep that one visible and everything else are hidden on this frame um, so go with a comfortable dimension with your choice and for me i think i took a dimension of 34 millimeter and then height is the pole height is 60 millimeter i want to go ahead and split the view so i'm going to say clipping plane on z and maybe flip it so here is the cross section you can see this is this has a groove in the middle and this one is to allow the the pressing plate to go up and down so what i did is i built this pole with that cross section and then mirrored it over on here and then added these two pedestals and also this part the top plate and then put everything together down part workbench this model specifically this model is easy to build in part workbench compared to part design all right so this is our first mo mo first part and then i want to show you what i did next i want to talk about this one which is the wheel bearer and these names are arbitrary i came up with this uh, on the fly so this is the wheel bearer which will bear the wheel the main wheel and then this is simple um, you don't have to go all the fancy way here the main part is that this cylindrical hole will hold this wheel oh i have a wheel bearer but i don't have a wheel ah, that's too bad 
there it is that's my wheel i renamed it as multiplier so let's talk about that this multiplier or like the wheel is uh, it's a gear so it's an involute gear right so you can see it's an involute gear just like that and then i cut it so here is this extrude this is how i created All right so i had this involute gear right right there and then i sketched this up so this part will be taken out so it out that part out of this involute gear and then you will have this part right there and this will be eventually the multiplier that i'm talking about here very simple and there is this hole to hold the pressing bar very simple and next i want to talk about the driver the driver is a smaller gear that has the same m value as this gear so this tooth will fit in right there and then i think we have a six ratio in here so i can go take a look at the involute gear and then i can say that we have number teeth number of the teeth is six here and in the multiplier number of teeth is 30 so we have a 5 ratio both of them have the same module 1 having this module 1 module whatever the module is same between these two parts is very crucial so we have we have this number of teeth and we have this number of teeth here it will be important to calculate the ratio so now it is 5 okay and then we have the presser so this is the plate that will go with the frame and as you can see the presser has these two elongated portion that will fit in into that groove that we built earlier and then it has a holder for the bar that we just it will be a slot this bar it will connect between this presser plate and the driver the wheel bear the multiplier and after all of that we have a handle that will be used to drive the driver so this part will get into here all right that's all of our parts and as you can see i have them built all in place except this driver so the driver is not out it's not the place it should be built in here but we can handle that and everything else is kind of like built in place so that helps putting this together in the assembly and we have the all named accordingly it is very important that you name them accordingly whatever the name is it is important you can recognize that name all right, here comes the fun part so there is the assembly that we want to build the assembly also is um, the new assembly comes with FreeCAD one version it's not available in 0.21 or earlier version so don't try to attempt this with an earlier version it will not work and also if you have the assembly file created in FreeCAD one version later on do not open that file in FreeCAD to one version it will mess up your file all right so in the assembly workbench our first task is to create an assembly and then we add things in there i want to add my first part that will be fixed in place which is going to be the frame and i want to keep it right there so i had like if you see a notification that says do you want to ground this part i say yes so this is my default that anything that i add the first time in the assembly this will be grounded what it means is like this part is fixed in place it's not moving anywhere right the next one i want to add the the wheel bearer i want to add this one so one click on that part it adds it and if you add another thing at this in the same window 
this thing will not be in the same location as it was built in place but if you keep adding one by one they will show up in the same place that you built so originally i had built it like this where i see that this gap will align with that pressure plate that i'll be fitting in and that's why it is important for me to keep it in place and what i want to do i want to hit ok and i want to come in here the wheel bearer select that and ground this so in other way this wheel bearer should be part of this frame so they can be added all together but i built it in separate part but i want to add them like fixed so that's what i did now i have two grounded units in this assembly they are not going anywhere they are pretty important so it is important how you build things in place if you want to want the different parts to show up in a certain it is easier to do it in the building when you build the sketch in assembly uh, it is a little tough if you want to uh, freehand moving things around and then set them in place if you don't have like you know coinciding lines between these two parts it is a little tough so i'd recommend build parts uh, where they should be if, if so thinking ahead helps but there are other ways to um, set different parts in different areas we will we'll talk about it later all right let's keep adding i want to add the multiplier now right so it shows up because i built it in xy plane to begin with later i actually try to flip it up but it looks like it doesn't show up uh, the original plane is important but it's not a big deal i can select on this from this plane on the left plane and then it shows these three axes i can use this to flip it vertically the way i want that helps right and i can move it around freely what i want to do i want to take this and then fit it in here and actually what i did is i had this extrusion so this is 2.5 millimeter gap and the gap between this point and this point is also 2.5 millimeter i built it like that that way i can just drag it and then put it in there with the revolute joint so here comes the revolute joint right and i want to take say this circle on this face so see how this axis shows up on this face and now i want to match that with this on this face there so it made things right there all right now i have this one going all the way around we will come back to limit this movement between this point and this point something like that so we have that one done now remember it was the revolute joint so it's not going sideways it's only allowing rotations up and down now i want to add the the multiplier that's what i just added i want to add the driver so i want to add driver in there all right maybe i can move it up here so the driver has these two ends rooting uh, what i want to do i want to put this part in this hole so and that will be another revolute joint so i want to take that just like that and put it in here oh you see the axis is kind of not matching up but i guess that's fine for this case so we have this hole now if you are asking how did these two like match up exactly like that because when i was building this hole i placed it in here so i calculated the length from the dw what i mean is like let's go in there into the multiplier and in bullet gear here it says dw that's the pitch diameter which means 30 is so if you take this center and this somewhere here in the middle of this teeth 
that's 30 millimeter so between this point and that point is 30 millimeter and I add that up we take this driver and take this one it has a DW of 6 millimeter so that's diameter 60 and this is diameter 6 so that kind of gives away where this hole should be so I, I, I use these two dimensions to calculate this length so it will be 17 plus 3 between this point the center of this circle and center of this circle all right that helps so that parameter is important as well now we have one driver and one multiplier moving individually both of them have a regular joint in there i think this will help us apply the next joint which is going to be a combination joint so i want to move it in so something like that now let's keep our finger crossed sometimes this works sometimes this does not so let's hope this will work i want to go and create a gear joint in here i want to add this smaller gear first and let's say i want to do it like this so this z axis is moving outward actually before i do that i want to hide this part all right now i want to apply a gear joint so first i want to take this the z axis is moving outward pretty cool and now i want to come here and take this one also the the z axis is moving outward right and then so it says the radius i'll have to put in two radiuses so that's that's going to be what the dw is i know that this one is X and this is going to be I forgot. All right, let's see. We'll come back to those values. Now we have this gear joint moving, but they are not in sync because that pitch diameter, that radius, we did not apply correctly, and that's why it's not. It is moving, but it's not matching. So let's take it in a good fit, something like that and let's take a look at those values again so the dw is so that's what we need dw is six the diameter is six and the other one the diameter is 30 right there 30 so radius when i were applying two radii in a ratio i think we can go with diameter or radius either way so the first one we applied the smaller one so this is going to be six or six over two and this is going to be 30 or 30 over two i hit okay right. let's see if that worked this time yes perfect so now that diameter is kind of like moving up and down pretty cool all right so you can see still it is working so we'll have to limit our movement so that way this doesn't go past this i'm comfortable as far as this goes and that's the farthest i want to go and here too that's too much it's touching the ground so something like that all right, so we can do that. So here is the regular joint that we applied on for this one. So let's see. Yeah, that is. So double click on it. And now I want to rotate it. So this is at the lowest position. You can see it says minimum angle minus 37. And maximum angle also says minus 37. And I want to take it to the maximum position where I want to take somewhere like this and the maximum angle will be 36 now i want to take it back now that i know which one is minimum which one is maximum i want to bring it up somewhere here right and then say minimum is minus 37 and then take it all the way to the maximum positions and say maximum angle is 37 now i can go ahead and round it up okay and hit okay 
so now this is confined in this range so there is another issue with this feature sometimes if it crosses 180 in the middle uh, this doesn't work the minimum and maximum flip so i will make another video on how to rectify that the trick is you go in and then change the sketch but it is possible it's a limitation it's possible so now that this part is working let's go ahead and add the handle and i want to glue this one to this this piece so that way i can use this handle to drive this multiplier so that's going to be a fixed joint so the fixed joint all other joints it does not matter like how you attach them but for fixed joint there is a sequence say i'm trying to fix this hole into this extrusion so one of these parts will have to move right so we select the first one that is stationary the second one will be the moving one so we'll have to make sure that the sequence is maintained in here so let's take this one the first and then take this one so that one moves right and then if you wanted to place it in a suitable position see if i can move it i cannot i guess i'll i'll take that or if you want to make a rotation like that make it a horizontal so this angle will help all right i want to keep it right there I hit okay so we have the so fixed joint it is important that you you select you maintain the sequence which one is moving which one is staying in place All right there so now we have the driver that drives the multiplier and now we have two more pieces to add to this puzzle but i'm happy that this thing worked pretty good so no worry about that okay and then let's see um let's add the pressure i want to add the pressure right there and you will notice one of my previous videos actually a couple of my previous videos i talk about how current assembly workbench does not have a slotted movement but has these three important uh tools for us to assist with us and i will be using those to make a sliding joint in here what i want to do i want to make this face and this face parallel all the time there it is so that's a parallel joint now whatever it is it will go up and down but it won't flip and then what i want to do is now i made them to fit in right there so maybe i can take this line and this line and make a slider joint so maybe make a cylindrical joint because it has more freedom to it right and hit okay so now what it does is it will go rotate like that but it will also rotate it will go up and down it will also rotate which is okay we can take this corner and this corner and make another cylindrical joints i think we are fine with this it goes up and down uh, just know that the maximum it should go is about this right there let's go in one of the cylindrical joints and take it up and down and see so that is going to be our maximum length 28.98 make that 20 yeah 29 let's see if it worked so now it will not go past that limit so it will squeeze you in very very closely but it will not cross that limit maintaining the physics uh, laws of physics there all right so we have this presser we have the multiplier but we need a connection between these two and that connection is going to be this bar 
and we'll have to be very careful about this because now this one is going to be putting all the whole mechanism together and we have too many mechanisms uh, too many joints playing at the same time so so let's talk about it so in reality doesn't matter how perfect your bearings are it will allow just a little bit of play on the sideways but because FreeCAD has this ideal environment in there if we apply both of them here so this joint will be a rotating revolve and also this joint will be another revolve but so if we apply both of them as a revolver joint here uh, there is a good chance it will crash because it, it could be like over constrained so what i'm going to do i'm going to apply this one in here as a cylindrical joint what it does is it will keep it there but it will also so it will it will go sideways but it'll also go up and down so maintain that connection there but give some flexibility and now i can take this right let's put them together kind of like there and then bring it down just a little bit because i don't want want the workbench to get confused that that should do maybe give me some more room so now i want to go actually pull it back in just a little bit there so i want to take this edge and this edge to mate as a as a revolute so what i want to do i want to take a revolute and take that edge and then take this edge on the other i think it doesn't matter but there now it should work fine let's see oh it does not let's solve it so this is this bar kind of like messed up because before that this joint was working yeah i think it got misplaced but it was working right let me control z bring that bar back now i can fix this because it's not working i can drag it right there i'll accept that now i can go ahead and delete this bar and think about it one more time so now this is working right and this is working so the connection between them is not okay it happened to me before and the only explanation i could give was that so let, maybe what i want to do is i want to take a revolute joint and apply it here and apply in here so that kind of fits in now this goes up and down let's take it all the way up and let's bring it in somewhere here so this time we are flipping our joints between revolute and cylindrical now we can take a cylindrical joint and take this in the halfway and take this halfway i built it such a way that it will fit in perfectly so taking the middle point kind of like helps me place everything in there but because it's a cylindrical joint it should uh, it should play nice all right moment of truth ah uh, i don't know it worked last time so save it and this is solve assembly we, we solve it 
right? Maybe I applied too many. All right. Um, let's take a look at my other model. Let's see what I did. So in the joints, I have a cylindrical joint right there, regular joint up here, and there is a parallel joint. Okay, that's one cylindrical and parallel oh i see all right so the difference between my previous model which was working and this model is not working the difference is in this pressure plate so in the joints i did one parallel two parallel what is this for all right No, that's the old one. This is the new one. So we, we have only one parallel joints applied in here. And two cylindrical joints. Maybe that's what messing things up. So let's take this cylindrical joint from this side. Delete that. Right? And then take these two surfaces. Make them parallel. So now exactly this is the same thing that as the previous one. And it's not working. Oh, it is. And what a difference a parallel joint can make. Two cylindrical joints kind of like adds more resistance to the flow so it becomes a, like a redundant support so one of them was enough and then to limit the rotation like we showed earlier uh, we have to apply two parallel joints in tandem and that works fine all right probably i should make a i should write a blog about this issue Anyway, I'm happy that I, I could figure it out. So having the previous model definitely helped. Let's bring this one back. So this is our complete assembly. All right, my friends, that's it for this video. Uh, in this video, I showed you why a assembly may fail. It could be a redundant support, um, redundant joint mainly comes from uh, applying too many of those. So if it fails, you no, know, uh, there is a good chance it's the it's assembly workbench, but it's a better there is a better chance that you know it is the number of joints that we are applying. Um, with that thought, I want to end this video today. If you have any question, comment, suggestion, or any any recommendation on how to improve this workflow, please let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video.